Well, um, I care about the ocean because um, our future is deeply embedded with the oceans and because we extract a large number of resources from them, especially so in developing countries. And um, I care not because I have a deep affinity to nature, I don't really, but because I, I hate the waste that uh, the, the present mode of exploitation of the ocean uh, implies. Uh, I hate the waste, a waste that, uh, that uh, bad fisheries practice represent, um, discarding fish, and not using things to their potential. And the thing about using things to their potential is that you could catch more and yet have more diversity. Um, and that, that form of waste is, uh, is an outrage. Presently, it's certainly the fisheries. The fisheries are the most potent force changing the ocean. Then, in the future, uh, it's undoubtedly acidification and global warming, uh, of which acidification is one effect uh, because of carbon dioxide. Because fisheries, contrary to to what people might think about about the impact, are uh, is a is a wholesale attack, industrial attack on the on ocean life. Uh, we we devise uh, we devise fishing boat and fishing gear in a manner such that they will they will catch fish. They, this is the only enterprise that we have uh, that is devoted to catching and killing fish, and they do. So life is affected by fishing, and uh, the collateral damage is immense. Perhaps then I could say that the second thing is a collateral damage by fishing. Um, the, uh, the destruction of bottom life um, in many parts of the, of the ocean, particularly where deep sea fishing is undertaken. So the, the fishing itself endangers and, and, and threatens uh, uh, marine life. Now, it has therefore to be conducted in a, in a, in a very reasonable manner. And, and right now, we, we are not conducting it in, in a reasonable manner. The, the other uh, huge threat that I mentioned, the, the acidification, is one which uh, has, in the course of uh, the evolution of Earth, has uh, impacted the ocean several times. And uh, uh, lots of species disappeared because of this. And it took millions of years to, for life to be reestablished um, following acidification events. So, um, acidification is very scary and while the fish can move to another area when temperature increases, that is happening right now, except in the tropics where, where they, they cannot, uh, uh, well, they, they, go, uh, they go into cooler area subtropics and not, nothing replaces the fish at all. Um, so, so, global warming shifts population, except in the tropics. But uh, acidification uh, traps them where they are, and, and there is very little defense that the animals have, except rapid evolution. But then, if evolution, evolution needs variety, uh, diversity, and uh, fishing reduces variety and diversity. So you could have a situation where they are not enough, the population is not big enough to evolve fast. Well, one of them is, uh, is reasonable fishing, reasonable fisheries policy, uh, including abolition of uh, subsidies, because a reasonable fishery policy will adjust the amount of effort to the size of the resource, so it would reduce the impact of fishing all by itself while producing more. That's a condition sine qua non. And the other thing is that uh, the other um, policy that uh, must be followed is 
um, setting up protected areas in the ocean, marine protected areas and marine reserves. We understand the role of uh, terrestrial reserves very well and we have them, about 10% or 15% in different countries uh, of the earth is covered by forest, for example, because there would be no forest if they were not protected. And in the ocean, we don't have that. We don't have that. Uh, presently, about only 1%, 1 2% 1 is nominally protected. And most of this protection is provided by recently declared large marine reserves. Um, um, the marine reserves that were proposed, that were um, set up in the earlier decades, uh, were tiny. And the growth, the progression, was not going to do anything. Because you have to understand that fisheries have expanded in the last decade. And they have expanded to and gone into areas which before were not fished. And, and these were the the elements, the areas that enable the sustainability of fisheries by providing us with new fish and uh, and preventing the overfishing to be from being systematic and everywhere. So, to the extent that we go now everywhere fishing, we have also in every place of the earth to put uh, marine put marine reserves, and I'm I'm happy to see that now the the transition to more marine reserve is happening. The most disappointing response really comes from scientific colleagues who do not understand that that the, the mode of operation that was characteristic of our discipline, which is would produce good results and hope that they would be picked up somehow, doesn't work anymore. And, uh, and they are very defensive, these colleagues, uh, about colleagues who, who do outreach, and active outreach, defensive and jealous often uh, about, about uh, people picking up ideas and, and running with them that they think should be more bettered for a longer period and discussed among scientists. I believe that uh, the lay public can be and should be involved in this kind of thing and uh, this kind of discussion. And the best transmission between the lay public and, and the scientists uh, turns out to be uh, NGOs, big ones, little ones, local ones, and international ones. The NGO community includes, is more and more science-based, and it includes good people, uh, uh, people of good will. I, I, my personal experience with the NGO community is really positive, and I think that uh, they allow university-based researchers, especially them, to to have a bigger audience and a big impact without compromising them uh, the way that working for industry compromises you.